welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast, number four. Episode four. All right. So let's get this train wreck rolling, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm Mike, and he's Morrison. We're ready to go, I guess. Yep, and uh, this this time Mike and I are going to be discussing Bestiary 6. But first, it's only appropriate that I do the thing, right, Mike? Take it away, Morris. <laughs> So, Bestiary 6, uh, when did this come out, Mike? So, how recent? Not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before that. So, I think that's the 27th? Close enough so, for me. Around uh, the 27th of last month. The last Wednesday of last month. So. Timestamp 26. That's got to be the 27th. Okay, so, 26. Uh, yeah. yeah, both you and I have been paging through it. Uh, at first, I was like, meh, yeah, okay. And then, like, the deeper in I got, the the more interesting it was to me. Because they got some interesting little tidbits in this one. I think they do, too, as well. So got a lot of big bads, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, and constructs. If constructs is your thing, this is a place to look. There's quite a few, um, yeah, some really high-level constructs, too, really. Between the... The Warmonger Construct, which is one of the very last entries, and then the... What was the CR-20 one? It was a... Uh, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I'd have to look through that. Um, the one with the souls trapped in it? Yeah, that's that was a nasty one. Yeah, let me see if I can track that down. <laughs> we probably should Yeah, we probably should have done this beforehand. You should have told me you wanted me to look it up. Okay. Well, I didn't think about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit for time. Uh, it's a... Quint, 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 quintessent gone. Quintessent gone. Something like that? Sound right? Quintessence? Quint, I can never pronounce that word. <laughs> Some DM I am. <laughs> okay, quintessence golem. Quintessence, um, thank you. Yeah, that's what it was. That thing was nasty. Page 142, for those of you le- leading al- reading along with us at home. See, now, I'm having trouble just pronouncing words that I know what they are tonight, so we're in rare form, folks. Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, Quintessence Golem, this partially humanoid creature, appears to be uh, a verse of... Uh, yeah, zoom in so I can actually <laughs> read it. Carved of smoky glass... Uh, ghostly screaming faces whirl within its immense body. So, you Nasty. Got, dude, you got your immunity to magics. Uh, All golems have that, by the got, way, but yeah. Yeah, well. Um, the thing, it, thing is with this one is it's attack, but it's, it's melee attack. It's like a plus 45 slam. Mm, that's right, that was the thing we were discussing. That was... No, that's uh, yeah, powerful. Hey, miss you, people. Let's powerful that. blows. That's what that was on her. Uh, it, Quintessence Golem adds one to one half times its strength uh, bo- to bonus damage rolls for its slam attacks. And its slam attacks, they're probably not missing most people. Mm. I, I'd say, because they got two slam attacks, probably well, at least one of them is going to get through at least. Nah, you, I mean, you can, if you really focus on armor class, you can pretty much avoid most of that, but that's a pretty hefty investment, you know what I mean? So, they're going to hit you, and it's going to hurt. It's, it's a mere uh, 750,000 GP to, <laughs> to have to one. Buy one yeah. <laughs> it's a lot less to make one, but yeesh. Yeah, well. Considering you get... Like nine hundred and fifty thousand in your adventuring career over twenty levels. I usually I've never, that's a lot of money. I've never been a fan of you're gonna spend part of your experience instead of levels. You're gonna make a thing. That's well, what I don't, it doesn't even cost experience to make anything. It just costs you money. Okay. 
Well, I must be thinking. They got they they did away with it. It cost you okay. levels. To Thank do God, guys. Like, why is this? That used to drive me nuts in in you know third edition three point five. Would make anything. No. Yeah. Why would you? Because it's like the rest of my party is going to go sailing by me, or we're gonna you know if we're following an adventure path. God forbid I, I make something because when I do, I'm going to be so far behind where I should be. The final yeah. boss is going to, you know, crucify me and, and wear my flesh as a second skin. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, the old system was better just to find shit. Hey, I found somebody else that was dumb enough to make a magic item. You know what I mean? Heck, in previous editions, it used to cost you a con point to make something. Oh, God. That's, Plus experience. That's rough. That was, you know, second edition, first, second edition. I, that's I fucking rough. I'm pretty sure it cost you a con point. Incidentally, that was my first F word of the night. Folks, in case you didn't catch it earlier or or don't realize, this is a podcast where we sometimes use the adult words. So, yes, because we are adults. If you, if you fumbled in here hoping that we'd be sweet out of the mouths of babes and never say anything... Uh, Horrible at all. <laughs> I want to tune into a different channel. Yeah, yeah you're in the wrong podcast. Now we're not going to go out of our way just to, you know, throw the F word around. But you know, when it's a but like it's there, you, you saw it just slipped out, you know, because yeah. um, it, uh, well, we're we're going for like HBO. A, it's not like I'm a doc, I'm a sailor in my normal life, so it's not like I throw around that much. But I, I mean, occasionally I flirt with it sometimes, you know. Yeah, you, well, you know, <laughs> to make things interesting. Uh, so then you've got your gold golem here too. That's uh, for your your crassly opulent person who wants to, which oddly enough does not cost as much, maybe because she's only a CR fifteen. It's not real but, gold for uh, one person too. Ah, uh, it's fool. lead that's turned into gold as as you animate it. Ah, I did not. And then when it that. dies, it turns back into lead. I guess so. That's got uh, alchemist. It's kind of an interesting twist, I thought, on the construction process. See, but yeah, that has alchemist undertones all over it. Then. Mm -hmm. like, I didn't realize that. This is why I didn't want to promise you folks too much other than the uh, the bestiary because this will like there's a lot of interesting stuff in here if we dig. Oh um, yeah, that's. I could spend an hour. I it took me four or five days to basically go entirely through this book. You know, now between me, I have my own system where I. You know, I copy and paste them and put them in my own little file so I can find them easier than trying to look through a million stupid books. But, yeah. Because mm -hmm. obviously, me, pictures don't matter because I'm blind. And <laughs> has not saw my post before. My yes, life. hence the Blind Sense podcast if nobody's figured this out. Like, this is the way that it is. Um, yeah. It was a play on words, so, you know. I, I think it works. I think I it think, works. Hey, I, I don't <laughs> care what anybody else thinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed it enough to listen. But anyway, well, yeah, but I'm not going to change myself just to make everybody else happy. Is what I'm saying. Well, there we go. Um, I do these stupid things funny, so there you go. So while we're already <laughs> off the rails, uh, uh, well, and we're in the G's, uh, Goblin Monkey. How about that shit? <laughs> uh, I've seen that before because it was in a previous book, but uh, I just. Eh, they're, they're cooler than normal goblins, I think, but just a modicum, maybe a it tiny bit better. <laughs> freaks me out just a teensy bit, you know, not a lot, because I'll get into what really freaks me out here in a minute. But <laughs> goblins, oh, spiders, yeah. Well, that that too. Nagas, <laughs> man, nagas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> Why did it have to be snakes with human faces? Who does this? So. Yeah, Nagas um, are... See, oddly, I hate snakes in real life, and Nagas don't bother me. Now, the you and... Or the... Whatever the heck... Uh, the serpent folk, that's a different story. Yeah. Nah. Serpent folk, maybe you can reason with. Uh, the... the... Uh, less so than... <laughs> right, well, depending on the Naga. Really. Actually, probably the, uh, the rat folk are, are the ones you can really reason with, because they might actually want to bargain with you. And, yeah, uh, true. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but goblin I don't know monkey. snakes. I'm just not a big fan of snakes. Period. So, goblin monkey. I don't think other than being a more um, it's more what, like just like an arboreal goblin. Yeah, like kind it. of a primeval goblin is as along the lines of the words that I'm looking for. Like 
I I don't feel it adds too much. I mean, naturally, yeah, if you're going, really, it doesn't really add a whole lot. It, it's just just it's. It's like a sub race of goblin if you think about it. If you're going for one of these more caveman settings, though, I guess thinking about that, I can see a way that that would weave in. I know, like in Galarian, they live. I think the island's Magalt. I can't ever pronounce that island either. Magalti Island, which is where the red mantises are from. So Mm -hmm. it's like a jungle island with dinosaurs and crap. So it kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, No, Naga's freak me out just because like I could deal with it if you had like shoulders and arms okay oh <laughs> like, but yeah. but just just a head, with just a face just on a head that go with a face on it that goes straight into a snake like your your worm people particularly now we've got slime nagas uh oh uh, yeah those were those were creepy, yeah. The slime-covered serpentine creature has a humanoid head resi- resembling that of an angry old man. <laughs> Get off my lawn, you damn adventurers. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I thought I think that's one of the first ma- male versions they've done. It's usually a female head. <laughs> Possibly. Well, either way, I ain't in a hurry to go sleeping with it. Slime lawless <laughs> like, basically like to live in sewers and crap, so yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. As if I didn't and they, like and they can they can control slimes and stuff. Hmm. So you know, which ties into we got a lot of uh, slimes and and uh, this, it, yeah, plants and slimes were a big feature of this. Well, because uh, James Jacobs, he was, he was basically the guy that put all the monsters in those books and oversaw the whole the whole basically the whole building of the book. Notice that hey, there's not a whole lot of you know these really high level slime monsters, and there's not a whole lot of high level plant monsters. So he tried to rectify that and put you know you know where he thought he needed some of the things. Well, typically, whenever I think of slimes, I think of that whole generic experience with oozes, where it's like, oh shit, it's eating my weapons. <laughs> kind well, yeah, kind of. They kind of do that to it. Well, green slime does that anyway. Mm-hmm. These are worse. Be like, well, I think one of the nastiest slimes of the book is called an oblivion. Oh, mm. yeah, I glanced at that one. It's not great. It like can, can disintegrate you and crap. It's like <laughs> oh. uh, for a page over to that dream naga. This Got large it. flying serpent has a humanoid head uh, outlined by colorful, uh, colorful frilled hood. So basically, you've got the the. It's like a cobra naga. Yeah, extra frill cobra naga. I think that freaks me out just as much, if not more, than the slime naga. Because um, she's also got like these, it, like a, a beard, bearded, fleshy tentacle things going down from her cheeks. and uh, well, it's, Sometimes it's good to be blind. Let's put it that way. Uh, that's not even the worst of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not telling me the worst of it. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you soon. You need to share in my pain. Uh, Thanks a lot. <laughs> that's what friends are for. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Asshole. Uh, <laughs> we put together, I put together some highlights that I wanted to touch on, and now, you know. Well, yeah, we're kind of jumping crap. all over the place, whatever suits um, our fancy. But let's see here. Slithering Pit was something I definitely don't remember ever seeing before. I've seen them before, but they don't come up very... We've never played an adventure with them in before, so... Yeah. Uh, weathered cobblestones give way to a deep rough pit, the edges of which wriggle and contract of their own accord. Um, it's, it's kind of a neat concept, really. Yeah, it was interesting. I wouldn't say it, by any stretch was it the strongest, but it was... Oh, God, kind of, no. Something it's only a CR2 or 3 or something. It's... But it's 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 well it's it is interesting. I meant strongest as far as flavor text, but you oh, know it's yeah. like uh, it's a you don't see that every day. Whereas some of these ones they have for uh, fish, like eh, so it's a big fish. That's good, well, I guess. You still have to have your mundane ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. Not everything can be um, the most interesting thing that you ever saw. Right. I mean. Uh, skin crawler. There was an ugly one. Talk oh, is that the one that that was the little ooze thing, wasn't it? It looks like so- somebody skinned somebody's back. 
and yep. then just let it crawl along the ground. It's, and a, it's a little CR one half ooze, if I remember uh, correctly. Yeah, it's just pretty it's gross. Disgusting. Yeah, it's like some serpentine uh, thumbnail is attacking you from under somebody's flesh. Like, because uh, basically what it does is it attaches to you somehow, and it drains a point of constitution every day or whatever, or damages it. And then every day you heal a point so it doesn't kill you. Yeah. But if you, you know, get into a problem where something else drains your, in the, you know, goes, or you get two of them on there, then you're screwed. And then they, you know, after they kick, basically they drain you to zero, it crawls into your body, sucks all the fluids out, and then bursts like 12 more of them out of there. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty creepy, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't get really. Nothing really scares me, like I said, except for snakes in real life. I don't know. Snakes in the game, I just murdered the shit out of them. It but, depends yeah, I just... on, like, that's that's ever so lightly touching on body horror. And I understand oh, yeah. how some people are freaked out by body horror like that, where it's like, there's this thing living inside of you, and it's suddenly taking you over. Like, I mean... Well, like Alien, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, the, my stuff like that doesn't bother me at all. My favorite horror movie ever, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, where it's the whole <coughs> you disappear. Where were you? Wait, you're not you anymore. That's pretty freaking cool, and that's that's also scary <laughs> from the the solo perspective. As as soon as you become infected, it's like, ah oh, man, how long do I have? Because this this thing's gonna start taking over my cells. So. Somebody actually did a monster based on the thing, which they did a pretty decent job of it. I'll have to show it to you sometime. Okay. Um, we've got giant ravens around this time, and raven swarms. And in our campaign, we had just seen a raven swarms. And I was actually surprised that this has This hasn't... one's slightly different than the one that was in the book, actually. Well, uh, that will happen with revision. I was just surprised that we haven't already had a bestiary come out with raven swarms and giant ravens already in it, you know what I mean? Because there's see a lot of the stuff comes out a lot of the stuff we get comes out in an adventure path first. Yeah. And then they put it in the best area so it's easier to reference a lot of reasons. Because it's 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 a pain in the ass to because you can get the best areas online, you know, you can look at those for free. Yeah. You can't look at the adventure paths and stuff for free, which is why they you know, it's, you can just reference the best area now for the thing rather than, oh, you have to, you know, recreate the entire stat block kind of thing. Yeah. And, and I understand why they do it that way, and I, I kind of appreciate it, but I was like, damn, I wish I had more new monsters, you know what I mean? But I understand why they do it, and I <laughs> approve of it. It's just, you know. Who doesn't wish for more new monsters, you know, other than kids going to sleep? But... <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, well, like my nieces, I show the monsters all the time. Oh, that's cool! And I never get scared about none of it. It's awesome. Yeah, well, it depends on the context, I suppose. Where it's oh, like, yeah. Um, so, Raven Swarms, never a good thing, as we discussed, with, mm -hmm. like, uh, Robert Jordan or whatever fiction. Like, I've never seen a Seen scenario. a good Raven Swarm anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's always going to kill something or someone immediately. Um I always think of the birds when I think of, like, swarms of birds. You know what I mean? The movie The Birds. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's... Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, why would he do that? And the birds jabbing his finger. Um, the Robert Jordan I'm using as my segue here to go to the Green Man was another thing that we had mm -hmm. in here. Uh, for those who are not already familiar with that Robert Jordan Green Man or other Green Men... Uh, this man is formed step. entirely of green leafy plants and bark. His fingers extend into lengths of vine. And, uh, like, I was surprised that in their interpretation, at least, because, again, Robert Jordan's green man, and there was only the one left, uh, was the only depiction I'd seen up until this point. So he was a benevolent spirit. But, no, here we have... Uh, They've got several different types, and some are good. Neutral, evil, regular neutral, and neutral good. Yeah, and some are evil, and some actually had like... The evil, evil ones are apparently are the most rare, but yeah. But they had like uh, poisonous plants in, in their realms. And, mm -hmm. uh, they attack animals and kill them and drive them off unless they're too big to do that. Yeah. 
Now they yeah, particularly kind of like I kind of like what they did with them, but yeah, I, I kind of wish it was more Robert Jordan. You know what I mean? Well, I think you. I don't remember if this was one of the ones that I was reading off, and you're like, that sounds like a da da da. It's like you got the CR level right. Uh, this is a CR twenty six. It's particularly hard to kill. Like there's yes. there's one other in here that I think is much harder to kill, but I would not pick a fight with a green man lightly. Not unless you were CR thirty. Had a few a few, a few party members behind you. Yeah, I yeah. Would highly recommend not. I mean, to be fair, we've never really died ever. So. We came close. We came real close. Uh, there, there's times I can remember the one campaign we were in that Doug was DMing where he's like, "Let me re-roll that damage and see." Um, but, oh, oh, it was Dragon's Demand. We were fighting that monk that nobody could freaking hit. <laughs> and man, I'm playing a barbarian with like massive amounts of strength and stuff, and even then I had to roll like an 18 to hit the stupid thing. <laughs> It was ridiculous. I was like, we're all going to die. And yeah. he's like, on the fly, changed everything. Because we were getting the crap beat out of us. Sometimes what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a one I think I got beat unconscious during that. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Well, we, I, I was dying. I was, there wasn't a whole lot of life I had left in me. I know that. Mm. Like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't hit him unless I walked. It, was, it wasn't quite an 18. It was probably like a 16. But that was on my first attack, so there was no way in hell I was hitting unless I rolled that 20s half the time after that. Okay, yeah, now Green Man, that was the one that actually, that more so uh, than the one we were just, just discussing. The slam attack on him, I thought, was particularly nasty, because I'm paging through, I'm looking at this uh, Absorb Magic, when a Green oh, Man yeah, strikes the spells off. Yeah, yeah, he does a slam attack and can absorb one effect from a target as dispel magic. Uh, and, and he could put it on himself, I think, isn't it? Uh, treat this as targeted dispel magic. Uh, CL 20th. Yeah, maybe, Green Man. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of a different monster. Because I know there was one that you, when it did the same thing, when it hit you, he it targets, stole the spell. He prefers to target effects that prevent his finds from grappling attempts. Uh, oh, like freedom okay, that's of that movement. Free, so freedom of movement, yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, can de- grant divine spells to worshippers. I mean, like, right there, kids, should be a clue. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't fight him low level. Um, can converse with plants, can summon plants, uh, use thorns as range touch attack. This was nasty, that, too. That was the nasty one. Yeah. A range increment of 120 feet. A creature damaged by the green man's thorn moves at half speed, can take five foot steps. Uh, can't take five foot steps, rather. Uh, can't fly, can't use air walk, either naturally or magically, uh, until the thorn is removed. So it's like an anti-aircraft gun. <laughs> it's pretty kind much Kind of! But not many people are pulling flak cannon shells out, out of themselves after they hit the ground. Um, I'm usually worried about doing other things at that point. So, because I got a, there's so much to talk about, and I don't want to get bogged down. Uh, let's keep on going ahead. Let's page back up to the front, where uh, you've got at the very beginning they have the Alp, the hoofed creature with large yellow eyes, set in a noseless face, above a grinning fanged mouth. Yeah, my that one's not even familiar to me, so I don't know where they pulled that one from. Yeah. It's like a weird bat rat man, as far as I can see. Yeah, it's from the description, that's what it seems to be. I'm sure it's from somewhere, or maybe, hey, who knows? Because some of these stuff they made out of made out of nothing, out of whole cloth in here. Yeah. Ultra- they try to they try to pull from mythological sources when they need to, but sometimes it's like, well, I need I need one between this monster and this monster, and it can only be this, you know. Well, mythological sources is actually fascinating to me, as we'll, we'll get to here in a minute, I hope. Mm-hmm. Um, Alter Ego, you got that. This one I thought was interesting because it's a, a construct, but more of a biological construct, CR6. Yep. Um, and it basically creates a dark version of you 
which is like all your worst vices that you hate about yourself. So like if it was a, a paladin, say, who you know was trying to do something like take a vow of poverty, but is still tempted by material wealth, like that would be its main focus. Um, and it can actually impersonate you and make you look bad. Oh, I just had horrible thoughts about alter egos, but whatever. <laughs> like, what would be a dark version of Donald Trump? <sighs> Dude, that would be like the benevolent. <laughs> well, <laughs> Trump the beneficent. <laughs> Maybe we need to work on that. We, we, <laughs> every single freaking time, you bring up politics. I'm just trying to stay. It's not like I give a All shit. Right, sorry. It's not <laughs> I, like I, I give I, a I, shit. I, I hate. I, I, okay. I hate the guy. I freaking hate the guy. If I could vote him out tomorrow, I would. But you I'm know? afraid of what else is coming in. Yeah, people. exactly. But, I mean, I just... I don't want to start fights with people over that. Oh, I don't either. Hey, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But I'm right. I'm, that's all I'm saying. So, okay. so I'm the GM. Or Whatever. GM. I'm the GM. I'm right. I'm always right. GM is always right. <laughs> Welcome to Blind Sense, folks. <laughs> I'm always so, right. Um, In my campaigns, I'm always right, so that's all I'm saying. Sure, except for whenever uh, somebody points something out to you like K, it's like, I don't think that works like that. <laughs> well, I, a lot of times I'm not sure, so like, I don't know, look it up. I don't, I don't think that's the way it works, but look it up. And then he looks up and goes, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Is he not himself a benevolent leader, folks? I try. <laughs> So, Apocalypse Horses are in here, too. We got Apocalypse Horses and their riders in this version. Horses um, of the Apocalypse, baby. Yeah, we, yeah we, nasty. we've got a black horse, a pale horse, a white horse, and a red horse, whichever be your fancy. Um, pestilence, famine, war, death, uh, various insects. The insects, like the fish, weren't too particularly appealing to me, but hey. Well, they're, they're insects, you know. They're there, you need them. Um, arch devils. Yeah, there you go. So here's where we get into the interesting lore stuff, which I can't uh, drown everybody too much in, but one of my favorites of all time, of course, is Mephistopheles. Um, <clears throat> and as we were just looking up before this po podcast, Mephistopheles uh, allegedly got his first incarnation uh, in the German folklore for Faust. So naturally, you've got the Faustian deal, the contracts being signed, where you pass over your soul to some devil. Yep. And uh, he actually has an artifact that is a quill, which I'll page down to here. Sees one of was it only two of them in this book that have artifacts? I think it was. Oh no, there's a lot of them that have okay. artifacts. Actually, but Visineer is the about name. half of the about half the arch devils have artifacts. Actually, okay. Uh, Visineer is the name of his uh, major artifact. Uh, weighs about a pound. Um, something I found really interesting in their flavor text for uh, for uh, uh, Meth in this version is that he was made literally from the ashes of hell. So you got uh, Asmodeus down there doing his thing. is like, hey, I need another guy. Let's make a CR-30 creature out of the ashes of hell. Uh, Redskin Devil, he has three sets of cur curving horns atop his brow and three mismatched pairs of wings. Um... Meph is he usually badass, honestly. He's usually the fun one, as far as from back in the D and D days. Well, at least like, well, Eric there. makes him out to be, but yes. Well, there's a little bit of that, and I kind of agree with Eric on it. Like I, I like the the concept of there occasionally being a, a devil or demon that, to you on the surface at least, it seems like he's got a good personality. Um, like but to, he's just evil as shit anyway. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, like to go on a, a wild tangent here, as we love to do, um, do you ever see the old uh, sci-fi series Brimstone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I freaking love that, and I love the, the devil. I can't remember who played him in that. 
but it was him and Alex Stone, I think, was the detective. I think so, yes. Um, but he, uh, the, he had this joking, antagonistic relationship with Stone because Stone was sent to hell trying to avenge his wife who had been uh, raped by some guy, so he killed them. Then he got shot in the subway. And uh, I, I loved episodes, like, particularly... Uh, there was an episode he was craving Reggie bars <laughs> and he actually got a hold of some Reggie bars at the end of it. And it's like, you think you've won Mr. Stone, huh? You know? uh, another thing with the devil I absolutely loved was they had an episode where, uh, he, there was this, uh, pagan chick who had like all these nasty, uh, s- seance fueled powers that she could use and stone starts to fall for her and then he realizes who she is because she's incognito at the time and they get to the end of the episode and he finds out that she was one of the people that engineered the escape from hell and he has a moment of of realization where he looks at the devil he's like you love her don't you I only ever lo- loved one person, and that was God. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> <sighs> Nostalgia. Yeah. So you got uh, Dispater is another one. Uh, Dispater originally, according to our, our quick wiki research here, used to be a Roman god of the underworld. That was later subsumed by uh, Pluto or Hades, depending on whether you're Greek or not. And uh, was a god of riches, agricultural land, uh, mineral wealth, and uh, yeah, basically just an underworld deity. So when he got deposed, then shit got simplified from dispater to just dis. So those of you who are all familiar with getting lost in dis, uh, it's her. yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> Eric loved to say, uh, that's what that's all about. <laughs> the rusted iron. Uh, this diabolic figure is draped in a kingly robe, crowned with iron horns, bears a long, heavy mace of black metal. Uh, CR twenty-seven has a major artifact, the eclipsing eye. Uh, which uh, is an unholy, wo- uh, unholy wounding heavy mace. So, mm-hmm. yeah. This mace is pretty nasty. <laughs> uh, Belial, uh, which uh, apparently originally came from the Hebrew Bible and was a Hebrew term meaning worthless or lacking worth, as it was uh, traditionally understood. Yeah, basically another allegory for the devil. They did some weird stuff with this guy, honestly. Yeah, one half of this figure body is gleaming and beautiful with an angelic wing, while the other is scaled, scarred, and blackened. And he's got this whole half-angelic, half-demonic face and body. And I swear I've seen Belial uh, shown this way before, but I'd have to do more research than I've had time to do to actually know what's up with that. Honestly, he reminds me of H. Hell, H. E. Single Hockey Stick from uh, North Mythology, because you know she's you know beautiful on one side and all burnt and whatever on the other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's. But uh, he's well, because in previous editions he was it was always him and his daughter that ruled one layer. So, I I don't know. He's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, because he's like super sexy in his angel form, and then he's super ugly in his demonic form. Well, the sad thing is, the, the most recent thing that I played with this uh, kind of character was there was one of the painkiller games, the third one. Don't buy it, kids. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> The first two, I haven't played the remake yet. I did purchase it. I, it's sitting on my sh- my Steam shelf waiting to be played. <laughs> With all your other Steam shelves? <laughs> yeah, that's a story for another time. But yeah. no, That's a long like, story for another time. Like, the game was so bad. Like, the other ones had some things that were pretty hokey, and it's like, okay, other than that, the story's pretty serious. 
I can I can deal with some shit. And Eve appears at the end, at the middle slash end of the game. It's like I I don't know about that one, but I can deal with it. And then they have this other character that he's half angel and half demon. Like, literally, the story is an angel and a demon hate-fucked each other, and he was the product. Seen that before, yeah. And, well, and it's not like we haven't seen that before, but he made everything a joke to the point where it's like something massacre, I remember, Chinese massacre, I think was the title of one level, and he's like, no, it should be massage, and it's like, that's not funny. It's not, and that was my takeaway from the whole game, is like, this is really sad, it's trying to be funny, I wanted, trying too hard, I wanted them, fun. I wanted them to be straight-laced, I didn't want them to be funny about this, you know, and that's, mm. so, everyone, they were trying to beat Duke Nukem and failing miserably, yeah, so I look at him and I see that character, and, so, that's my own personal baggage. Nothing against Paizo. Um, <laughs> moving on from that, uh, Beelzebub, or Beelzebub, depending on which uh, original flavor you like, but Beelzebub for here. Uh, a, this swarm of droning black flies teems in the semblance of a winged angel with red glowing eyes. Um, and they did some interesting stuff with him here that ties in to some of the mythology. original mythology whereas apparently uh, he was not pleased with you know being second banana to Asmodeus and he's like ah, no I should rule shit and that didn't go well for him but he at least achieved some rank because of that because um, he was always his lieutenant but then yeah the He's like, ah, oh, he got a little uppity in Asmodeus' face when he gave him the smackdown. Yeah, that's a pretty common thing in, in demonic slash yeah. devil lore. Um, so, Beelzebub, again, is of a Hebrew, Ara Arabic extraction. Uh, and, let's see, it is another name for the devil, similar to Satan, in Christian. Let's see known as the Lord of Flies in the Dictionnaire Infernal. Uh, Second Kings, I believe it is, here. He was Sounds about right, right. yeah. Uh, Beelzebub was uh, variously understood to mean Lord of the Flies or Lord of Heavenly Dwelling, uh, originally the name of a Philistine god. So, if it's a Philistine, I can't imagine why it'd be, yeah, you're a shit Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's the way that, that's the way our religion works. Uh, I'm agnostic, so I I well my claim is really nice <laughs> say, but, yeah. I claim no ties to anything anymore because yeah that didn't work out. Yeah, uh, I'm just straight out atheist anymore, but yeah, <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, Mammon, which I keep wanting to say, Mamon, and you wanna correct me from that. But I don't know if I'm right either, but yeah. I, that's the way my computer pronounces it, Mammon. That's the way I've always uh, I know that it's at least... Stuff. I don't know if there's two pronunciations, or I think maybe that is the only one. I don't know. Um, I, well, I honestly don't know. It was from uh, originally New Testament in the Bible. Ba basically obsession with material wealth uh, or any entity that promised wealth associated with a greedy pursuit of gain. You cannot serve both God and mammon, in quotes. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, apparently you said here he also is a god of greed, more or less, material possession. Yeah, well, this, like in here, his form is a giant pile of money. <laughs> so... He inhabits a, co a swarm of coins or whatever, I believe. Huh. And he can take the form of a something. Because he's like a spirit that he in inhabits something, and then he can inhabit a giant statue, and I don't know. Uh, yeah, Garen, I don't know anything about him, really. Who's that? Uh, 
Archdevil Garen. Oh, Jared. Garen. Uh, has that horn of lies. Basically a big snake dude with horns. They love their horns, man. But that's not so much something that pies he's the, he's the three. He's the three snake perk thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a he's a former he's not even a, originally a devil, he's a, something else. Yep, so he converted to a devil lord, basically. Past meth here. Jerry Jerry Jerry's uh he was an Asura. Okay. Which is the kind of they're the kind of Indian demons with like the multiple arms and crap and you mm. know. Yeah, he's, a, he's one of those things. Like even more so the Norse mythology, like, like that's one of my weak areas of of what like you got Greek and Roman taught in you know since elementary school. Got it pretty good. Uh, a little bit of Norse probably in there. Yeah, by proxy Christian canon. When one takes one's first communion, one finds out about that. Mm-hmm. Um, you got. Uh, Again, by proxy, some Judeo influences there because we can't decide whether it's all the New Testament or not. So why not go to both? Mm-hmm. Um, but then I start getting into things like Norse mythology. I don't know anything about. It. I'm trying to pick it up, learn you know Viking stuff. Which apparently one of the things I found most jarring for for my uh, uh, monogamistic perspective on the world was no the Norse gods. Would Pretty much sleep with anybody who wanted it. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's, there's a certain kind of yeah. Their their fidelity was not quite as uptight as I <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. But yeah. then once you get to like the the Indian gods and the the Mayan gods and the Aztec god, you just, I, I don't know that. Like, I know more about mythologies, but yeah, I know more about Egyptian gods, ancient Egyptian gods, than I do about probably even about Viking gods. You know what I mean? Like Norse gods. I'm, I'm still trying to, to learn, develop a palette, whatever one would say. It's like I don't know. See, most most of my previous knowledge of any of those kind of was original, you know, first edition D and D and deities mm. and demigods. They, you know, they put all these. You know, I mean, it was pretty cool actually, because uh, they give you a little bit of backstory on, you know, because they because they be the Egyptian pantheology, the you know the Hindu, the whatever, and it was you know, okay. Mesopot- Mes- ancient Mesopotamia was one, so Marduk and all those people. Well, like Tiamat, that's from that's from Mesopotamia. You know what I mean? Yeah. Names ring a bell, but you know, I just don't know them as well. Um, Bahamut and, and and Tiamat are both from uh, Mesopotamian lore, hmm. which I'm not sure if that's you know that Babylonian or Sumerian, but yeah, it was one of those two because it's been a long time. But I I think Sumerian actually. Okay. Plotting along because we're almost forty-five we're, yeah. minutes into this, and we've got a lot more to go. Um, I, yeah, I think we'll probably just stick to the best here at this point. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got Moloch, um, which was a Canaanite god associated with child sacrifice. Fun. <laughs> Sometimes Moloch, Milcom, or Malcolm. Uh, and in the bestiary, this immense figure appears to be a suit of blackened diabolic armor filled with shrieking blasts of blistering fire. Um, and going back to the uh, Canaanite idol, uh, there's an 18th century depiction of this idol that apparently they would throw children in and burn them. Because that's the thing that you do to worship <laughs> your pagan god. Um, you said, was it original D and D had a thing? Yeah, like Pathfinder that? actually has a Moloch statue thing. Ah, I don't for which book it was out of, but uh, basically it was a magic item. But basically, you heat it up and you could throw prisoners in there and burn them to death in it. it 
Okay, was it just any random or were were we going full bore? Is like it's powered on orphan children's blood. You know what I mean? No, it just it was. I think so. I'm trying to remember where I saw it. I think it was in one of the Hell Knight books, but yeah, it was basically a magic item that they used as a torture implement to kill people with. Okay. Pretty sure it was one of the Hell Knight books. It might have been the actual Hell Knight book. But it was called a Moloch something. Moloch statue? Moloch... I don't remember. Moloch was in the word, I know that. Or in the name, I just can't remember exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was like a 20,000 gold piece magic item that was basically used to... to, You know, you stick them in there and it basically marked hooks them to death. But yeah, apparently in our Pathfinder thing here, Moloch, we've got his cult still. We got fire and ash and sacrifice to the bull and cutting hearts out and burning people. So, you know, it maybe... It's pretty well with the, with the lore, really. Maybe it's not really geared at kids, but, you know, we're keeping the fun stuff in there. Um, so just another th- fun thing for uh, the folks at home. Because I find this stuff fascinating. Um, the classification of demons slash devils, because you know in the real world there's not so much of a distinction uh, in people's lore. Uh, but we've got the uh, sorry, I'm probably gonna say it wrong. The Lantern of Light uh, from 1409 to 1410 uh, from some anonymous author, and they say uh, uh, Wyclef is cited erroneously oftentimes, but some anonymous author wrote about a classification system for the seven deadly sins and which demons were presiding over each one. So you've got Lucifer had pride, Beelzebub had gluttony, uh, Sathanus, sorry if I'm getting that wrong, uh, Wrath, Leviathan, Envy, uh, Mammon, Greed, and Avarice, uh, Belphegor, Sloth, and Asmodeus was a god of lust. Um, Some of those I kept, yeah. Asmodeus, who I guess he's too high tier to appear in this book. or He's a god. Actual no. god god, too. Yeah. Which they made him a god. So, and that doesn't really fit. Maybe if we ever get to the god killer levels, like if they can ever convince Jacobs and the others, it's like, no, seriously, let us kill gods. They're not going to do it, I can tell you right now. No, but let us be level 50 and super overpowered. Well, they let us... You can. They allow you to do it now, it's, just, it's more of a plot device than it is an yeah. actual going. Yeah. Uh, but... Well, because as soon as you start writing down stats, people want to kill them. Yep. Yep. Uh, so Asmodeus, uh, fun thing, was uh, in the, uh, the Book of Tobit, um, wherein, as I was reading off to Mike before we began this podcast, uh, he was hostile towards a... Uh, girl Sarah, uh, Ragel's daughter, and slayed seven of her husbands before they could seal the deal and consummate the marriage on the wedding night. Um, described as the worst of demons, when young Tobias was about to marry her, Asmodeus proposes the same fate for him, but Tobias uh, is enabled through the counsels of his attendant Raphael, to render him innocuous by placing a heart, a fish's heart and a liver on red-hot cinders, producing a smoky vapor that causes the demon to flee Egypt, where Raphael binds him, and according to some translations, Asmodeus was then strangled. Um, they also note here that Tobit uh, prays to be free from carnal desire and is therefore kept safe so like so yeah they're where he's boring as shit 
I'm I'm married. I am, never bad. I'm marrying. No, Thank you. no, no. You still got to consummate the marriage so that you know that's supposed to happen. But girls, I'm supposed to hate every minute. That's the moral lesson there. Well. <laughs> good, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, that ain't never happening. Unless you're gay, of course. Well, <laughs> and most gay guys don't hate women. They just don't want to date them. So, there you Okay. Go. You, no, like. I'm not, this is a whole other thing that I'm not going to go into, but I will Sorry. say there are gay dudes that are like, I know this dude's gay. And they had kids with a woman. You know? It happens it all the happens. time. And it, it's, it happens all the time. It's a sad thing to repair, really, but yeah. It is because you're trying to force yourself to, to normalize it's somebody it. else's ideal, yeah. Yeah, and then you're, you're in a loveless existence, which is the saddest shit ever. Mm-hmm. But. But, like, it does and can happen. And I think it's kind of like, okay, I'm a weirdo prude, so that's a thing. I'm also (laughs) a bit of a lech, so that's also a weird thing. And then just to add to the confusion, it's like, then you've got a a religious text like this that tells you, it's like, no, don't enjoy it. Like, no wonder we're fucked up, man. (laughs) Yeah, I don't do it any time. <laughs> That's why I don't listen to people preaching, because a lot of times they don't even know what they're preaching about. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, okay, we got, uh, whew, we need to hurry up here. <laughs> we got, oh. fun stuff happens here now. We got uh, Dai Tengu, uh, which are a new variety of Tengu. Um, these ones... They, they, interesting. they got the big red faces, they got the big r- red noses, and as I was looking up the Dai Tengu as they exist in Japanese mythology, apparently uh, the bigger and badder the nose bigger is, their nose, the, the more, more powerful, powerful they are. They are. Um, oh yeah, there's one that we skipped over, Blighted Fae. <laughs> That's fine. We That's can keep going. nasty. <laughs> Oh, it's so nasty. But the blight, the blight, uh, what was those creatures in here that create the blight? I can't think of it off the top of my head. The create the blight? Yeah, those horrible aberration things. Uh, I'll find it in a second. Blighted fay now. Oh, the ones that make the blighted fay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's part of the back of the book. Um, straight up blight. Blight, swamp blight, tundra, you know. Oh, there's just blights. Then you got the queen of that nastiness. Yeah, that's what I was trying to remember. Um, Bloody bones, nothing too exciting there, but that one just kind of reminds me of um, those red skeletons that would keep getting up in Castlevania, which completely uh-huh. does not fit the text of what they have there. Um, Boggarts. I don't remember ever seeing those before, but uh, I've heard of them. They were in a previous edition, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I think it's the there. first inclination of them in Pathfinder. But yeah, Clockwork Dog. Here's your chance to have a Clockwork Hound, folks, for the low, low price of thirty thousand GP. Hey, in adventurer's coin, that's not really that bad. <laughs> well, you know, even in the modern day, it's probably priced appropriately, because that shit ain't easy to make. Um, it's cheaper than the angel or the demon one. No, uh, or Yale. There was one that I wanted to touch base on, um, which actually, apparently, in Greek mythology, I was not as familiar with. She was the second eldest of the Gorgon sisters. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah. Yep, she was, uh... She was immortal. Her sister, Steno, sorry if I'm getting that wrong, was immortal, whereas Medusa was mortal. So how convenient that's the one that Perseus fights. But, um, what they did with her in this variation was very interesting to me, in that not only could she turn you into stone, but Th- then she could manipulate the statues afterwards. And yeah, that was kind of neat, actually. That was a nice touch. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that whole monster there. Yeah, that was it was really well done, I thought. I particularly appreciate the fact that she uh, 
has actual ties to mythology from before. Mm -hmm. I'm going up here a, a second. I gotta two. I gotta knock like mm, the Bane light. I'm not a fan of eh. this, this firefly with a woman's face, Fay that that hates human lights. Gotta kill the human lights. And the mocking Fay, like, uh, and it's it's got to be intentional. I'm convinced that that is so I... close to mocking Jay that that. Uh, so you got a parrot with an elf head that's gonna come up and talk obnoxious shit to you, but it's not even gonna use words. It's just gonna do a mishmash yeah, yeah. of whatever. Um, you make a decent familiar. I'll give him that. But yeah. Uh, skipped over the combusted. That's freaking. <laughs> that's nasty. And it's it, what gets me about it is that it is such a bizarre twist on such a mundane seeming thing. Uh, because like dudes just spontaneously combusting, eh, not too scary. They wander around and try and set you on fire too. Now we're talking something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they were a little creepy, yeah. Arrow Demon. I think that's actually an old one. What is it? Arrow Demon. Uh, blue skinned woman has ram's horns, third eye in her forehead, and a long uh, scaled tail oh, and a viper's head. Ah. Uh, it's not. It's not. No, this is actually a new one. Okay. Uh, so there was Arrow Demons before, but. I thought that's what completely different that though. was pronounced as. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I think that's an erotoma. Erotoma? Well, I should get erotoma on any day. What? I hear that. Except for the snake tail. That's kind of a, a deal breaker. That's a bomb sack. Uh, <laughs> snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> uh, the Lilla 2. A uh, woman with goat horns, goat hooves, and a serpentine tail. Her eyeless face is their most disturbing feature. Other than that, like, uh, you know, she's, she's somebody she's you could take out for a few drinks. The whole whole problem with her is that she's slowly going to try and uh, corrupt your soul from the inside. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I'm just not going to come keep my mouth. Uh, yeah, I know where you're going with that, too. Don't, they all do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all do that, exactly. <laughs> Um, Hoopia, I had never heard of these before. Also, Upia, Opaya, and Opito, or something like that. Um, oh, this is the, uh, yeah, these, thing. these are a Taino, I hope I'm getting that pronunciation even close, uh, <laughs> Taino, uh, lore, uh, whereas that's like, Caribbean you, you know, Caribbean, Cuba, Trinidad, Jamaica, uh, you know, Puerto Rico, all those those tropical island areas. Uh, Pupia are the ghosts of people who had died, uh, and they, according to the old lore, they would just exist uh, in the dark if they had not moved on to a, an earth, earthly paradise called uh, Koi Bay. Um, they can assume different forms, faceless people, deceased loved ones, uh, can be distinguished by their lack of navel in the original lore, and uh, were associated with bats for some reason, and eat guava fruit, because why not? <laughs> but Man, in this, sometimes it makes me wonder where people come up with some of this. In this, it's, well, you know, some of it, they say, is lore to scare your kids, keep them from wandering away. Um, right. Other stuff, not so much. But this one was particularly sad, I thought. Because yeah. the, the entry on this one is that typically they're uh, undead that are trying to get the semblance of the life that they lost. And they'll try and convince their loved ones that's like, no, oh, I was just away and I forgot to tell you. And typically it doesn't end well for them. So, no. yeah, that's unfortunate. Kamatachi. Jeez. Uh, 
Just the like, one you were I about. saw it and I knew it had to be Japanese lore because, you know, um, their depiction of it, <laughs> not the greatest, but I'm looking at the original uh, Japanese ink illustrations and it's not far off, but that's some nasty stuff. Um, <laughs> the, the, ta- the little weasel that takes people hostages and will, will slit their throats like that, that's... Come Sabers on. for hands or something. I remember and reading feet. about that. Come on, Japan. That's completely unnecessary. Uh, which also lets segue to Nekomata, which is a cat yokai. Uh, yokai for the uninitiated. Oh, this, yeah. Generic Japanese demons. Twin tails. Basically, a house cat live, live too long. lives <laughs> too long and decides, hey, I'm going to turn evil as shit and start wreaking havoc on the world. Uh-huh. Um, it was interesting. It's creepy, but interesting. I told you cats were evil, didn't I? I like cats. I Deal like cats it. too, but they're evil. <laughs> so just like women. What? What? <laughs> That'll really get me in hot water. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> we don't really mean those people. We just say uh, it's funny. Come on. It's, well, I would say it wasn't funny. <laughs> that's that's what you know. That's. That is how I know I'm already losing the argument with the woman is like to go, it's funny, come on. No, she's not buying it. <laughs> you, you already done screwed up, son. Uh, La Lorna, that's another interesting one. Spanish American, um, a ghost of a woman who lost her children, which we have this too, shows up around rivers. Um, in the legend, which this is one of the ones that they claim might have been uh, Spanish folklore to tell your kid to get the hell inside after it's dark <laughs> and don't go uh, creeping around. They had she would possibly take kids who looked a lot like hers and drown them too. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then that's how you get past St. Peter is like, no, here's my kid. Here he is. <laughs> we got were creatures in this one. Holy crap. Oh. We've got were mantis, were spider, were wasp, which why? <laughs> why? Yeah, pretty ugly sound from that's, what I heard. Dude, that's not even a confused boner. That's like a you know No <laughs> I'm having none of this. Yeah, that's yeah, I it wasn't appealing to me at all either. They're pretty nasty creatures, but <laughs> they're interesting. They're just mm. were bugs? I don't know. Endothropes, I think, is what they call them. But yeah. Yes. Uh, just hmm. Uh, you've got the fallen exoskeletons, fungus queen. That was the one from. That was the one. Controls trying to the blight. Thing. That's like this fungus stuff is nasty. <laughs> like uh, I don't know whether to say good job or bad job because it's nasty. Um, not Depends on what side of the screen you sit on Mars. <laughs> I guess. Uh, don't piss him off. He's going to send a fungus queen after us. <laughs> uh, you got naiads, which are... Uh, one, of the race, one of the new races featured in the book. Yeah, no, they're actually ancient Greek originally and are a female spirit of nymph, which it was interesting to me that, like... The Greeks had like no, all these different body of waters had different river gods and things like that. But mm-hmm. they didn't, even though the river is and water is connected, they believe that it came out from like the core of the planet. Um, it's like no, you can swim around in these certain, you know, take the next right and then the left, and you don't have to go through the salt water. You end up at the other clear water spring. Sure, why not? We'll give that to them. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. It's just. Completely ridiculous, but yeah. Uh, Soglov, I think it's pronounced. That cycloptic werewolf creature oh. with the rat tail. And the, Is that the one with the single eye or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it uh, it's Serbian in origin for that one. That's some nastiness. That's uh, pretty ugly, yeah. Human body, horse legs, dog head, iron teeth. Which is in the legend too. Why? For the love of God, why? And a single Some eye on the forehead. Some people have really, really interesting imaginations, Lawrence. That's uh, not 
Yeah, so. Just think all of this shit's real. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> Pleasant <laughs> dreams. I'm gonna go to di- I'm gonna go to my grave thinking they're not as uh, real. At least I hope to. <laughs> so yeah, you had that. You had different giants. You got these. Got your kaiju in there too, by the way. Hmm. Which is you got your version of Mothra, which is the one before he turns into a moth. Yep. And then you got the big three-headed whatever thing. I see. I can never remember the names of Godzilla's monster friends. So you got swarms, hive mind swarms specifically. That's a pretty creepy thing, actually. Kind of yes, kind of no. Well, it's, I mean, you got a bunch of rats, and one of them smarter than the rest, and can you know? Yeah, but then just kill that right rat. Here. You know, huh? then just kill that rat. That's, yeah, but then it just transfers to somebody else. That's the problem. Nah. Takes a while, but but the thing is, a rat's flinging a fireball at you. <laughs> it's just like or whatever. Well, psychic spell, so it's no fireballs, but still, doesn't even have to be a rat. It could be a. It, any kind of swarm you can put it on, so a vermin swarm, so you know, a bunch of mosquitoes or whatever you can have it too. You had your yeah. psycho pomps in here too. I got mixed feelings about this. I mean, like the uh, Memtim, I guess it's pronounced Angel right. of Death. She's interesting. Uh, Otheros, the the Moth Lady. That one was very interesting to me. Um, the Whipperwell ones. Oh, yes. The, uh... Yeah. Shoki, Vidus, I could take them or leave them. Um... Yeah, some of them are okay, some of them may. We got Rougarous, which, man, was that hard to research, kids. Uh, Rougarou, apparently, in the original... Uh, the original Rougarou, it's hard to pin down... There's some crossover with Wendigos, and basically it's kind of a a Franco-Native American, Louisianan thing that's going on there, where it's just... It's a cross of a bunch of cultures in one giant cluster, basically. Depending on where where you're coming in on this, there's all different interpretations of it. I really like what Pathfinder did with it, honestly, so, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, a werewolf light, which in some of the versions, uh, yeah, that's more or less what a Rougarou can be. Uh, from what I've found in the limited research here, uh, some say that the Rougarou in certain cases could change at will, like some of the werewolves, whereas some were cursed. So it's a creature that kind of has no clearly defined space in which it exists, but at least, at least within the confines of Pathfinder, they gave it a good place and made them as kind of a, a light antagonist towards the werewolves, I guess you'd say. Yeah, they don't like werewolves. It's nice you finally get a, a race with a good, good strength and a good wisdom for a change. Mm. I don't think there's a whole lot of them. I think there's only one other race that has that, but yeah. Which I think is the Vanara monkey people. <laughs> Because, well, especially with if it's a race, they, they're very hesitant about giving it, like, full-blown, you know, shape-changing. Mm-hmm. Which is probably why they give it to them once a day, because that's not out completely out of control. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I liked it, so, yeah, whatever. Uh, Tanomi are worth a mention. The weird eye-hands people, which oh, immediately yeah. me, makes me think of that scene from Pan's Labyrinth every time. And one that I've got to get in here, uh, the Yure, I think is how that should be pronounced, uh, from Japanese folklore. Um, now, the Yure has some nasty attacks in this, like some nasty claws. Um, long black hair obscures the face of this pale woman with each motion. Her body twitches and jerks. And... She's in white robes, long, dirty claw hands and feet. Uh, when a person dies in a violent death or in extreme emotion, a blinding rage or in overwhelming sorrow, she may return from the dead as a twisted and horrific undead creature 
known as a URA. Uh, and basically they want to create the same torment that they suffered on their victims, which uh, CR-12 undead. And if this to anybody else sounds like it did to me, where it's like this has the grudge written all over it or teke teke like <laughs> the that's what this stuff is basically because what i was finding from my research on uh the entry i could find on japanese uh, ghosts like this they share the theme of being very obsessed with that emotion of what they felt when they were dying and the seeking of revenge and Teke Teke, I think, is actually a good example of that, because that's a folklore not everybody maybe knows. Mike, I told it to you the other night. In case you forgot, let's tell you again so the, the kids at home can hear too. <laughs> so Teke Teke, depending on the version of the story that you've heard, was a young girl who was by some train tracks in a, near a subway when some guys just raped her. Because, hey, <laughs> that's what... Young Japanese boys do, I guess. But whichever, regardless of way of how this happened, these guys were dicks to her, and she ends up on the train tracks. And she ends up getting run over by a subway train. So the reason they call her Teke Teke, nice touch, is because that's onomatopoeia for the Japanese sound effect of her long claws going teke, 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 teke against the ground as she's walking around on her hands looking for her lower half. So if she finds you, boys and girls, she's going to make you just like her. Yep. Not a good thing, yeah. <laughs> well, that's like another one that they had. Uh, Kuchisake Ona, I believe is how that's pronounced. Um which translates, I believe, roughly to slash-faced woman. <laughs> uh, she, one of those lovely stories, uh, just just like throwing in rape and, and violence in here. Like that one was her husband thought she had cheated on him. So he goes ahead and cuts a chunk out of her cheek and murders her. And you'll find her walking the streets uh, late at night wearing a surgeon's mask, you know, one of those medical masks, and she'll go up to you and ask you, do you think I'm pretty? And you're best advised to say yes, because otherwise she'll murder you. <laughs> so if you say yes, then she's going to pull this mask down and say, do you still think I'm pretty? And if you say yes at this point, she's going to cut up your face so that you match her. So you can be pretty too. Now, even though I don't yeah, think, no even though I don't think I'm particularly pretty, I think I'm prettier without the slash across my face cutting into my my jaw. Uh, so supposedly, in in some circles, you know, depending on your version, some of these folklore they say you can't get away no matter what you do. But the very Japanese way to get away from her, kids, is you say, I'm sorry, I've, I've got this appointment. You see, I'm already late. So you excuse yourself, and being polite Japanese spirit, she won't quite know what to do for a few minutes. And you run. You book it. <laughs> well, otherwise known as the blind guy is in history. <laughs> Well, hopefully you got somebody to help you out there. Or you might be able to get off with the, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't even see. I wouldn't know. <laughs> and she might just leave you alone. That's what I was just thinking, too. Like, hey. <laughs> could only be so lucky, you know. We've got Wild Hunts. We've got Whisperer. I know, Mike, this is one you probably wanted to get in there was the Whisperer. It um, was interesting, yeah. This uh, luminous shape stands twice the height of a human. A pale light shines where, it fa where its face should be. And when I first saw this, I thought, <gasps> Slenderman! <laughs> but apparently not, right, Mike? It actually comes from another uh, short it comes story. from the foot, the willows from Algernon Blackwood? Yeah. 
So. So that's uh, an interesting story, which is, by the way, is public domain, folks. So if you'd like to go hunting for the willows by Algernon Blackwood, that's a little horror tome that you can read yourself to sleep with tonight. <laughs> um, they're nasty. Mm -hmm. They are they're the, funny, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, withstanding the demon lords in this book, these are possibly the the one thing that I said there was one that was nastier than the Green Man. This is it. Like, they take you in steps towards madness. They, in some ways, yes, they are nastier. But yeah. Well, first off, kids, the, the, the DM gets to roll your sanity checks on this because it's supposed to happen so subtly that you're not really noticing it. So if you see a bunch of these around and your DM starts rolling dice, look out. <laughs> um, That's also, usually a good point at any time a DM starts rolling dice for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> fair point, fair point. Um, they've got a uh, rejuvenating ability. Um, so even if you manage to kill it, it's going to appear in its landscape the next new moon. Uh... It takes you these steps towards madness, which will eventually compel you to hurt and or murder yourself. Uh, it's got mist tendrils, which can give you a cursed wound. Uh, oh, yeah, it's incorporeal, yeah. A DC 31 caster level check, or the healing has no effect on the injured creature from that wound. Yikes! Uh, inescapable curse. Once per day, they can focus their attention on a single creature. A living creature with intelligence of three or higher, because, you know, those low-level idiot zombies are kind of cool with them, I guess. Um, and they can get within 120 feet to plant a, a curse on you that is another DC-30 will save to not be cursed, which will only get you immunity for 24 hours. And if you are cursed, uh, you can't leave. Because <laughs> if you go to exit, you're going to get sick. And after you're sickened, you, next time you fall asleep, you vanish from where you went to sleep and you wake up back in their territory. That's messed up. Yeah, I, I was actually pretty clever, I thought, but yeah. Well, if that's what happens with the them in the book, man, I need to read that book. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting here. So, uh, stay away from the Danube <laughs> is where that was supposed to take place. Um, yeah, and uh, unsuspected, that's the whole thing where they, you don't know about their roles. But yeah, yeah. This, is, this is one of the places that uh, quote-unquote civilization is not going to be able to claim. You can kill them permanently, Oh, it's a bitch. Yeah. There's a lot of steps involved. Like, that, uh, that Yure that we were reading off, that, like, there's steps involved to permanently banish her, too, and that's actually in the original folklore. But, but that's relatively simple compared that, to this thing, yeah. Give her, give her burial rites, you know, treat her better than, than, you know, better than garbage, treat her like a person. These things, yeesh. Yeah, they're nasty. <laughs> so that, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot more to this book, but that's about all the time I think we can squeeze in, folks. Probably. So yeah. uh, <laughs> maybe next time we'll uh, we'll get to some of the other stuff. Um, Mike, did we want to peel back the curtain a little bit and and tell them about the schedule that we were going to try and follow from here? Oh, we can do that. Yeah. That's we're gonna try. Well, yeah, we're gonna try to keep this, keep it from being too long, and try not to ramble off course because we tend to do that. You know, even when we're trying not to, we still do it. So it's fun. We're gonna try to stick to you know short clumps of whatever. Um, this one we pretty much stuck with best year three or best year three six because it's a relatively large book. But yeah, and there's just a lot of really interesting stuff to talk about. So okay, so basically, yeah, we're gonna try and follow a cycle of. Do a podcast, wait a couple weeks, do another podcast, wait three weeks, 
and uh, hopefully that'll make us all right with um, SoundCloud. With SoundCloud. Do a bunch of dicks. But, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're using the service for free, so you know. There's I no, know, but it's still. But I still haven't seen our original episodes reappear. They're still hidden. You can find it all on YouTube, though. Uh, so until next time, kids. This is Morris signing out. This is Mike. Have a good one. The theme music used for this podcast, "Orc March" by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions on either YouTube or SoundCloud.com. You can also give us something more to talk about next time, like how we skipped over Krampus even though he's in Bestiary 6, and I was all like... Hey, Mike, we need to go back and talk about Krampus because people really care about him. He's popular right now. And Mike's like, I'm sick of Krampus, Morris. We're not discussing that. Leave the podcast the way it is. What's up with that, Mike? Kids, email Mike with all your outrage that we didn't discuss Krampus to Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix, spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R. I-X.